CEO of Isobar, Jean Lin, is counted among the few women CEOs in the advertising and digital realm to watch out for. She is not only one of the pioneers of the digital renaissance, but also believes in constantly adapting to the changing times and needs of clients. I got a chance to catch up with her recently and talk about this dynamic industry and the ideal way to keep up with this ever-changing space. Jean, you've been in this uh, digital space for a long, long time. Tell us about uh, what is your take on how it has evolved over the years. I think the fundamental thing of digital has, in my mind, has never changed because when you don't look at digital just as a communication channel, you look at it as a tool. You look at it as a way to empower the future possibilities for any brand. I think it has never changed from day one. Um, what has changed is the way consumers embrace and e evolve with digital channel. And that's the interesting part and that's why I think everybody, digital and creative agency included, are all learning, learning every day in how can we create the best possible creative solution using digital. Because you're one of the pioneers in this industry, what do you think the word digital has come to mean to different people across different geographies? Today, it feels that it has reached the tipping point. So it's not, no longer, in the past it's more digital means digital advertising or digital communications or digital web campaigns. Actually today, many people have a very open mind regarding how can you use digital to transform businesses and brands. And I think that's the way that we're riding on and that's the competition that we're facing more and more today from ISOBAR perspective. It is with consultancies rather than traditional ad agencies. ISOBAR recently had a merger with Dentsu IX in uh, January, I believe, this year, in order to provide a full service experience to the clients. So do you look, uh, are you looking at more such uh, mergers in, in time to come, especially in the Indian subcontinent? So we have ISOBAR Japan in Tokyo, but we also have found Dentsu IX, which is providing similar services. When we combine the two together, we feel that it creates more scale for the Japanese market. That's the reason why for Dentsu IX and Isobar to merge to form Dentsu Isobar. But there's no plan right now in other markets to do that because in market we either have quite strong Isobar presence already or we have a full service Dentsu created proposition already. And that actually, we believe, meets the need of different clients. Tell me something, how has uh, ISOBAR India been performing? Well, we started quite small in India. We have 35 people only two years ago. And today we have already exceeded over 200. The, the, grow, the pace of growth and the way that actually um, ISOBAR India is embracing the Indian market actually is a good testament of our strategy of brand commerce, also product and service design, how they marry together and help brands in a more substantial way. So um, in Asia Pacific, obviously China is our largest market followed by Australia. I think India has tremendous potential to become the next China for Asia Pacific. Right, and talking about China, at a convention uh, last year in China, you said that e-commerce is the gateway into um, any brand for, for a consumer. So uh, since India is also so big on e-commerce, how do you think e-commerce can more effectively use digital uh, going forward? Even when e-commerce grow tremendously in China, it doesn't actually replace the traditional retail experience. It's always an online blended and off with online or offline commerce experience. So that's very important to note that the experience that the consumer are looking for are holistic rather than segmented. So we don't really, I mean, e-commerce is a good entry point for brands, but it doesn't mean that it will be standing alone aside all the other experiences in the retail space. I think for India, what I believe is with the rise of e-commerce and also with actually the potential of mobile and the opening up of 4G and all those um, possible initiatives that's just coming up, it's gonna change the structure of e-commerce and its influence in the Indian market, just like when mobile accelerate China's e-commerce market. So I'm really much looking forward to it. Right, and uh, as a front bearer of the digital uh, space, would you say that it, uh, you know companies which do not have any digital presence have no future? And 
for a country like India, how much time will it take to actually adapt to this new culture? I do feel that with the diversity of India, it provides very good opportunity for the digital culture to thrive because there are different needs in different regions and different sub-market and subculture on how digital can support them in forming that evolution. Where do you see the ongoing digital, as you said, cultural is evolved? Where do you see this renaissance going? I, I think that everything comes from the desire to design for people, not design for a device. I think that's one of the key factors when you think of digital you have to remember. Um, the other thing, obviously, is how it actually becomes cross screens and how you tell story across screens and how you ensure that data is a part that's not adding to difficulty for consumer but adding convenience for consumer. I think that those will be the key factors in how, um, how people adopt um, digital in a different way. And lastly, the one question which is of great concern to everybody is that there's so much potential in the digital space. We all talk about it, but the spends in it are very marginal. Why do you think that is? I think it will take time. And the time is not as if it's 20% uh, growth every year. I think if you, if you look at market like China, if you look at market like UK, once they reach a tipping point, where consumer conversion to digital has become dominant, the, the increase of digital and how that overtake um, TV in the example of UK, it just happened over 12 months time. So, so I think that will be the pattern that happened. It's really depending on how people of India embrace digital technology and all the different forms of digital communication. And that will be the determining factor for how quickly India adopt and jump to jump past the tipping point. And in your opinion, how long will it take Indian clients to be willing to spend on, um, on the media? This is a $1 million question, but I feel that the future is coming very soon. Right. That would be all. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you.